Hey folks, this is Moonbeam from RC Groups. Here's the inboard functional gear doors for the Retrax on the Park Zone P47 Thunderbolt that I made very simple, very cheaply. Um, for a lot of you guys, you're probably going to come up with a lot better designs. I just made this with scraps that I had lying around. And uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you how they work and show you one of the unique features of it first and do all that before I show you how I made it. That way, if it's not something you're interested in, I'm not wasting a whole bunch of your time. And if it is something you want to make, go ahead and keep watching the video, and I'll go through it all with you shortly. So here we go. Gear up. Gear down. Right, one more time. Gear up. Now, I have a little bit of a gap here on the, what would be from the pilot's perspective, left main landing gear door. That's just because I didn't quite measure this one out uh, enough or don't have it aligned quite right. But what's nice about it is it is out of the airstream. The doors do not hang down into the wind. So you're not going to get uh, air up there behind the door. Matter of fact, the stock plastic door that comes with it hangs down more than the ones that I just made. Um, so you're not going to get air behind it that's going to force the door to come down. Alright, one more time, drop it down, I'm going to show you how I put her together. Gear down. Okay. Go ahead and plug this thing, and then I'll walk you through it. Just for safety reasons, so I don't bump the transmitter and chop a finger off. I am that clumsy. Okay. Go ahead and move it over here to the other airplane stand. This is actually a keyboard stand that I use for painting, which is quite handy. Now, what's so unique about these doors? Watch this. Oh, well, you disbelievers. I am 90 degrees. You see that door moving? Of course not. I'm going to show you why that stays in place. What makes this gear door design a little interesting, a little more unique. Um, first of all, let me show you the materials. Simple plywood by Midwest. Write that down if you're interested. You can make it out of whatever material you want. Four point servo arm that you want to cut this way so that you get two 90 degree arms, one for each door. This is just a short piece of uh, control wire control rod. You're going to need a fairly long piece. Each of these little hook ones, this is uh, an inch and a half inch. So an inch and a half, bend it at the uh, one inch mark and fold it over. And then you're going to use two small pieces. Uh, one right here on the door. What this does is contacts this magnet. You need a small magnet. Uh, I'm eventually going to smooth out all that foam at some point. This one looks a little better over here. This was the first one I did. The second one looks so much worse. Uh, so that contacts that magnet and keeps the door locked up. And you can see in here, there's another little magnet right there on the inside of the slot. And I had to cut out a notch of foam here uh, so that this arm right here can get up in there. Now, I don't know if you can see it that well in the video, but right here, a big drop of epoxy is, is a little piece of metal control rod that hovers about, you really can't see it in the video here, but it hovers about the width of two sheets of paper thickness uh, away from the magnet. That way you're not getting full contact with the magnet, which is going to make it hard for the gear to open the door. It's just holding in place in that magnetic field. It's holding in place uh, to where the gear door is not moving on you in flight when it's deployed. So you could literally drop the gear down and do a barrel roll and your gear doors will stay right where they're at. So that's the magic feature. As I said, the doors themselves are made out of this plywood. And then what I do is I glue the uh, bottom edge here 
to a piece of carbon fiber rod, and this is an old used piece of carbon fiber rod. And then right here, at the ends on each, each end, is a little tiny sleeve cut out of this plastic tubing here, a little straw. And that's pretty much it. A little four point star cut in half, make 290 degrees, some control rod. Uh, you're going to need uh, a total of uh, three inches of control rod, and then uh, maybe another, now let's say four inches of control rod. Three inches it'll be used, then you cut them in half, it'll be uh, uh, used for uh, the hook here, which is what the wheel hits. So inch and a half for each side, and then two quarter inch pieces, which are going to be uh, what you put here to lock on the doors. And that's it. You get you uh, some CA and some kicker to do the tests. What I did is tacked everything first, make sure it all functioned. And then once it did, I used either 5-minute or 30-minute epoxy uh, to glue everything in place. And then I ran a little bit of Minwax sealer with a little bit of baby powder. Uh, brushed it onto the doors here to seal it up. That way I could paint them without the uh, wood absorbing all the paint. And that's it. There you go. The hardest part is just... Uh, Cutting a little depth here into the foam. Just want to make sure you got enough of a cutout that this can go here, right in the front vertically. And then you want to cut out just enough back in there behind it that the uh, servo arm, when it swings back up in there, because you see it comes out right here. You make sure that it clears everything. And that's the biggest thing is to make sure this is as loose and floppy as you can possibly make it. You want that travel to be nice and smooth. So um, just make sure you got enough clearance on everything to do that. And there you go.